Do you believe the theories that Putin's had a bit of plastic surgery done? What? <laughs> Yo, that's my favorite type of theory because it's like completely inconsequential. I love that. Like, I love that, dude. Cause, cause it has nothing to do with anything. It's just that's like, you don't get to learn anything about why he's like potentially paranoid or anything. Like at least the COVID stuff is like, you know, the long COVID one was pretty funny, but at least like the, he's terrified of COVID and he's like isolated himself from the rest of the world. Like that is like a little bit more about like, oh, he's paranoid or whatever. But do you think he got a little bit of work done? <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He got a BBL. Yeah. He got a BBL! Here's a question. Can Putin nuke Ukraine without fear of Western nuclear retaliation? The same reason NATO won't get involved? No. Also, like, people were making fun of me when I said, like, why the fuck would Putin nuke Ukraine? But, like, why would Putin nuke Ukraine? You got it. You're, you're getting... You can't, on the one hand, be like, Ukraine has natural resources. This is the breadbasket of the East. Like, and then simultaneously say, oh, Putin will just nuke Ukraine. Like, what's the re... Why would they do that? Why would he do that? And proximity-wise, it's still terrible for Russian territory. Like, the, the, the nuclear fallout of that would still be awful for Russia. Like, actual Russian territory. Winds would blow over uh, the radioactive material. It would destroy entire That's ecosystems. People think that like a nuke sense, is right? just like a big bomb. You know, it's like a bomb, but just bigger than like a normal bomb that you would think is big. <laughs> if you're going to nuke someone, you would not nuke someone right next door. You would nuke someone far away. Why would he invade? You can never tell what the moves he's making recently. I, you know what? You're right dude i i did say putin would never uh invade ukraine all of the reasons as to why i claimed if Putin would never invade ukraine because it'd be insane are now unfolding right in front of our eyes however you know there is again no reason for why putin would uh <laughs> nuke ukraine so maybe he'll do it okay who knows i don't i'm not inside of his brain i don't know here's a simulation of a nuclear Man, blast in a major city in the meantime, I do have something to share for you today. Um, I generally reserve uh, this channel for my own independent projects, but recently By I've been Neil with the folks behind the Nobel Peace Prize. And not only have they been wonderful to work with in terms of support and creative freedom, but they have allowed me to post the video here on my channel. Uh, so thank you to them and here's the film. I want y'all to understand something. Moment, the unimaginable happened. A major city is hit by a nuclear weapon. Now, no number could account for all the devastation that would result. But we can put a number on the deaths. At least we can make an educated guess based on our understanding of what nuclear blasts do to city structures and people. We'll assume the bomb is detonated in the air to maximize the radius of impact as was done in Japan in 1945. But here we'll use an 800 kiloton warhead, a relatively large bomb in today's arsenals, and a hundred times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Upon detonation, a fireball as hot as the sun would expand to a radius of 800 Sorry. meters. Those near the blast would be vaporized. And within a two kilometer radius, all buildings would likely be destroyed. And we'll assume that virtually no one survives inside this area. Real or fake? Which, based on population density, would start the death tally at 120,000 people. As you move further away from ground zero, Estimating deaths becomes more complicated. From as far away as 11 kilometers. Look, just look at how bad Chernobyl was and it still isn't, it is, it doesn't blow up and that's it. There's years and years of nuclear waste. Yeah, I think the nuclear fallout of Chernobyl is worse than uh, the nuclear fallout of a nuclear bomb. If I'm not mistaken. I think that like a nuclear bomb is, is a one and done thing and it's like up for, uh, it's up for like three, um, Growing hot, like you can, growing I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of nuclear hot, bomb that we're talking hot. about. But yeah, the the meltdown is is ongoing and steady. 
radiation for an entire region. Whereas with nuclear bomb, like you can, you can, you can live there. Twenty one, like the savage. Like you can clean up the the area and then continue living there after some time passes. However, proximity to a nuke is still uh, pretty significant when you're having a conversation about like uh, Russia launching nukes at Ukraine, especially if you're talking about like their interest personally in like taking an area. The radiant heat from the blast would be strong enough to cause third degree burns on exposed skin. Hey, has thanks for everything you've got. And as you get closer to the blast, months, you're the, best. the heat becomes so intense that clothing, even skin, would ignite into flames. That said, most people in the city would be indoors or otherwise sheltered from direct exposure. I get a summary of all that has but the very so structures that offered this protection would then become a cause of injury as debris would rip through buildings and rain down on city streets. As a rough estimate, we can assume that half the people between 2 and 11 kilometers from the blast are killed. From burns, debris, smoke, collapsed buildings, and radiation sickness. Which translates roughly into an additional half million people. Many of these deaths will occur days, even weeks after the attack. Radiation sickness takes about a week to cause death. And much of the dust and ash produced from the explosion will be dangerously radioactive, especially if it originated near ground zero. And the distance the particles travel will depend on the wind and other factors. Now, since this simulation is of an airburst attack, it will produce significantly less radioactive fallout than ground attacks targeting missile silos or bunkers. So we'll go with a relatively small number of deaths outside the 11 kilometer range. If it were a surface blast, the fallout deaths could surpass all other deaths combined, but it's a very difficult number to predict. In theory, radiation deaths can be reduced if people can avoid exposure to the fallout, especially during the critical first few days. Fallout shelters were common during the Cold War, but people rarely build shelters today. And schools no longer practice nuclear war drills. We generally well, that's talk gonna less change, about probably. surviving a nuclear attack. And in a way, it's good that we're less afraid of the bomb now that the Cold War is over. When nations are less on edge, the risk of accidents is arguably reduced. We had a good run, boys. But nuclear weapons remain one of the great threats to humanity. And today, we're entering a new era in nuclear weapon history. Long-standing nuclear arms treaties are being reassessed, and countries big and small face the prospect of new arms races. Six months of paying towards my favorite in part because technology is emerging that may three. give one side a considerable strategic advantage, notably hypersonic weapons. Current nuclear missiles travel around the Earth at high altitudes, making them visible by radar earlier in their flight. Now, some hypersonic vehicles travel close to the Earth, through the atmosphere, at at least five times the speed of sound, giving defending countries far less time to react. And remember that some of the most perilous moments during the Cold War occurred when countries maneuvered to reduce their opponents' reaction time. And the less time countries have to react, the more likely an accident will occur, or a rash judgment. And then you have smaller nukes that blur the line between conventional and nuclear weapons, providing a more slippery path to nuclear escalation. Now, for ordinary citizens, nuclear weapon policy may seem like a complex, even intimidating topic. But leaders often consider public perceptions when making policy. In many countries, voter opinion is an important factor. Whether you believe nuclear weapons have made the world safer... Bro, that's why I'm saying, like, if you're...
If you're a government, dude, you want to build a nation, brother? You need one of them shits. You, you need one of these, okay? Straight up, if Ukraine never gave away its nukes, they would literally not be in this position right now. They couldn't even use the nukes. The Hassan Doctrine is alive and well, boys. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I have to be truthful. Hassan Doctrine is you need nukes. We eat. Never give up the nukes, okay? And nuclear shelters don't work. Like when a tactical ad break comes at the top of the hour Hassle. and you need to run for a fallout, nuclear fallout shelter, and the only thing you have in your hands is something that actually does help, which is a $5 a month subscription or a Twitch Prime, which is free. Hassle. See me there, leave me there. I'm not leaving Ukraine. Or if you're lucky, maybe you can face it by getting yeah, gifted a sub. A, give, a gifted sub is like, someone is like, yo, I'm going to a, a shelter. Do you want to come? Fun fact, uh, Switzerland has the most nuclear shelters, like the most nuclear shelter space with respect to their population size in comparison to every other country on the planet. Switzerland has enough nuclear, uh, nuclear shelters. Um, yes, yeah, even more than Albania, a country famous for its bunkers. Um, they have enough nuclear fallout space or nuclear shelter space for, I believe, like their entire population plus like another third, right? Kind of weird. Kind of weird, Switzerland. Anyway, here's the one minute outbreak now. Thank you, Teddy Dasher, for the five tier one gift subs. Okay, let's continue. For, or more dangerous, both sides generally agree that the bomb brings an unparalleled risk and that there are things we can do to reduce the risk, like minimizing how many countries get the bomb or scaling back Slovakia, Cold War arsenals, or stabilizing technology races, or pledging to never be the first one to strike. Such ideas have often resulted in signed treaties, some of which have held for decades. Some are at risk of expiring, and some just need a final push to become activated. Yeah, By just being a steadfast push. in these efforts and not walking away from diplomatic achievements, we can continue the work of ensuring that this nightmare simulation never becomes a reality. That Abus Slovakia, it's if you would like to learn about specific Slovakia policies that could help reduce the risk of nuclear war. Hiroshima before and after. But is this real? Ninety-five percent of the destruction is because wooden houses burnt over days. The future eighteen million dollar doomsday bunker in Vegas. Okay, dude, I can't do this right now. Russia, good actually. Have you been keeping little bottle caps? Yes. A quick video comparing all the nukes in the world, size-wise. I mean, not that it matters. I feel like the size of the nuke does not matter. Oh, this is showing like you know the blast size of bombs versus a nuclear bomb. get this news pog wow that's really up that there's a father of all bombs and that is actually the most powerful one and not the moab i thought the moab was a nuke no mother of all bombs not a nuke we let me just say something okay we're talking a big game about thermobaric bombs and the mother of all bombs and and how russia's gonna use it you know who used it i didn't even realize moab was thermobaric thermobarbaric what is that a distinction? I don't even know what the f*** this is. We did, by the way, for the record. We, that was like the first thing that Donald Trump did, was literally drop a, a Moab. This video kind of sucks. It's just showing like blast radius. Little boy atomic bomb uranium used on Hiroshima, Japan, World War II. Batman atomic bomb plutonium, deadliest bomb used on civilians, World War II. Call bat bomb one ton. Radiation fallout worse than blast. This is, I think, the worst video I've ever seen on this. Like, it's actually the worst video I've ever seen on this. Like, there has to be a better, there has to be a better video than this. I'm, am I crazy? 
it's like incredibly scuffed. I can't watch this. I'm sorry. That other video was really good though. Um, okay, let's see. Court suspends operations in Russia until further notice. The International Court of Justice will hold public hearings in the next week uh, uh, over accusations of genocide in Ukraine. Wait, what? Oh, they're going to look into Ukraine and whether or not there's actual genocide happening in Ukraine. That's what they're doing. Okay. All eyes yes, on Putin world. as crisis Started escalates. What's happening there in Ukraine. All eyes also on Vladimir Putin as this crisis escalates. Our foreign correspondent, James Longman, has the latest from Moscow on Putin and his inner circle. James, hello. Wait, why is Ukraine the West's fault from 2015? Turns out you agree with Henry Kissinger? Dog, this is not Henry Kissinger. This is John Mersheimer. Henry Kissinger doesn't agree with me, I don't think. What the f*** do you mean? Turns out I agree with John Mersheimer. Oh yes, I do agree, and I have shown clips of this. Yes, John Mersheimer says that uh, leading up to 2014, there was no there was no conflict, no escalations whatsoever. He doesn't get fully in. I mean, I don't know actually. He might actually get fully into like the Euromaidan protests and like what uh, tur what it turned into. I think one of the most unacceptable parts of this was uh, EU recognition being considered an act of aggression. I don't believe that. I don't think that like EU recognition inherently is an act of aggression. Um, I don't think that's Western imperialism. Even though like they are gonna take advantage of Ukraine uh, and Ukrainian, uh, you know. Uh, cheap labor in the same way that like eu did for poland but i x watch this shut the hassle wait mersheimer uh in this in this uh talks about kissinger and kissinger actually agrees in this that's crazy eu uh the eu <sighs> like ukraine joining the european union would uh definitely be weaponized in the future okay would be weaponized in the future against russia for sure economically but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about NATO, which they never, ever had an interest in allowing Ukraine to join NATO and yet still kept saying, oh, we're just going to have an open door policy. Kissinger does have a good understanding of world politics. I mean, he's just a brutal f***ing genocidal psycho. The settle the Ukrainian start, a crisis start at the end. I'm no fan of Henry Kissinger, but I have to admit... He does have a very realistic understanding of world dynamics. He writes that the West must understand that to Russia, Ukraine can never be just a foreign country. Russian history began in what was called Kievan Rus. The Russian religion spread from there. Ukraine has been part of Russia for centuries. He points out that Ukraine is divided between the West, largely Catholic and speaking Ukrainian, versus the East, largely Orthodox and speaking Russian. Consequently, any attempt to, by one wing of Ukraine to dominate the other would lead to a civil war or breakup. He wrote this in 2014. This divide means that to treat Ukraine as a part of East-West confrontation would scuttle for decades any prospect to bring Russia and the West, specifically Russia and Europe, into a cooperative international system. He therefore advises the following. A wise U.S. policy towards Ukraine would seek a way for two parts of the country to cooperate with each other. It would seek reconciliation, not the domination of a faction. He's also adamant that Ukraine should not join NATO. Holy f I literally agree with Henry Kissinger. This is... What the f***? Brad Sage. Broken clock? Oh my god. That's insane, dude. I mean, not to say that, like, Ukraine has to be a part of Russia. That's not what I'm saying at all. Do not misunderstand what I'm saying. Okay? Uh, that's not. But neutralization, a neutral Ukraine would be a prosperous Ukraine. Yeah, a neutral Ukraine right. would be allowed to strategically take advantage of Russian. I mean, not anymore, obviously. This is before this invasion, for the record. Before this invasion. But I want to I wanna annotate that. So pre-Russian uh, invasion developments are very different than post-Russian invasion. Okay? Not anymore. But if you were to consider it, uh, if you were to consider the build up to this invasion and opportunities for neutralization, a neutral Ukraine is a Russian Ukraine neutrality is not possible. I think that Russia 100% would have not, Russia did not want Ukraine to be neutral. Of course, Russia wanted Ukraine to be weak and dependent on Russia. Certainly. Same with Europe. Same with Europe. Same with the European Union. Same with NATO. None of those motherfuckers care. Okay. Let's be real. Please do not, do not think that like, do not yeah. think that, like, uh, America gives a shit about Ukrainian lives. Don't be crazy. They just... I mean, American people might, but the American government does not. No, Less I meant neutral in the form of neutral like Finland. Finland is a neutral country. Finland is not a NATO country, but an EU, uh, EU country, okay? Finland is what I mean when I say neutral, okay? And that's, of course, pre-invasion, which is why Finland now has, like, a 56% or 53% of Finnish people want to join NATO now. So, that's a... Uh, you know, so good job to Vladimir Putin on that one. 100% his fault, in my opinion. <laughs> I wonder why. I wonder why Finland would do that. I wonder why, after years and years of just simply, like, cooperating, they were like, hey, maybe we should join NATO. I mean, despite how much we are afraid of, like, uh, Russia pushing back.
Anyway, let's continue. Yeah, TJ, announcements on new financial restrictions or penalties on. come almost daily, one by one. Countries and institutions around the world are cutting Russia off. The big question, can any of this stop Vladimir Putin? For Russia, every day of war is a step further into isolation, ever tightening sanctions changing the lives of ordinary people. With the ruble sinking against Ed the dollar, suck. foreign reserves frozen and a ban on foreign dealings with Russian businesses, France's finance minister this morning saying the West intends to collapse Russia's economy. I, I don't have that much money, but um, uh, I took a little bit, but it, it is worrying. This woman tells me the ATM didn't work for her, but she was able to line up and get cash from the teller. Who do you think is... The, to blame for this. Do you think it's Vladimir Putin or do you think it's us, the West. I support Putin, she says. It's our country. How can I feel otherwise? Another man isn't as lucky as the lady. You don't have any cash? And this bank don't have cash. So you couldn't get cash out of this bank? No. Why? You know. Protests continue. Now nearly 7,500 people arrested in more than 100 towns and cities across the country. Putin has his support, of course, but this war could turn back 30 years of progress, and not many want that. The Russian Tourist Board says 150,000 Russians are now stranded abroad. Their flights cancelled, their bank cards not accepted. What we're dealing with here is a government that's lying to its people, the people starting to figure out that they have been lied to, but because of the repression in Russia, they don't have very many outlets to express their discontent or to do anything about it. On camera Monday, Putin responding to the newly imposed sanctions on Russia, referring to the West as an empire of lies. And this morning, we're also taking a closer look at Putin's state of mind. Photos of him sitting far apart from his other world leaders and even his own top advisers. Few reports that he's remained isolated in recent years and hunkered down during COVID. So what about his inner circle? Sergei Shoigu, Russia's defense minister, is thought to be closest to him. They've been known to go on hunting expeditions together. Sergei Lavrov, Putin's foreign minister, he may be the public face of the regime, but it's thought not as close to the president. Chief spy Alexander Bortnikov, he's head of the FSB, successor to the Soviet spy agency, Asshole. the KGB, and apparently a trusted advisor. Those closest to Putin share his Cold War mentality. So even if he is listening to advice, it may only be what he wants to hear. The dangerous truth of this war is that it's not just an existential crisis for Ukraine, but for Vladimir Putin himself. The route he has chosen, this invasion means he, failure is not an option. And so the consequences for this country are dire too. George? So clear. Okay, James, thanks very much. Vladimir Putin is a COVID skull, dude. He is very, very scared of COVID. Like, he might not be a COVID skull in his personal life, but he's definitely terrified of COVID. Honest. Retired Marine Colonel Stephen Ganyard and Stephen, you saw you heard Ian say the battle is closing in. Putin is ordering in Chechens. He's ramping up the air attacks. This battle is clearly reaching a new phase. Do you believe the theories that Putin's had a bit of plastic surgery done? What? <laughs> Yo, that's my favorite type of theory because it's like completely inconsequential. I love that. Like, I love that, dude. Cause, Cause it has nothing to do with anything. It's just Asshole. like, you don't get to learn anything about why he's like potentially paranoid or anything. Like at least the COVID stuff is like, you know, the long COVID one was pretty funny, but at least like the, he's terrified of COVID and he's like isolated himself from the rest of the world. Like that shit is like a little bit more about like, oh, he's paranoid or whatever. But do you think he got a little bit of work done? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He got a BBL. Yeah. He got a BBL! <laughs> Can't go. <laughs> no, dude. Yeah, he got a BBL and and the and and it it it, it you know didn't poison his blood, but it poisoned his brain. <laughs> If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>